previously convicted murderer is back in custody again, this time charged with a triple murder. U.S. Marshals apprehended Larry Reed in Mississippi. He will be brought back to Texas to face charges for last month's shooting at an apartment complex that ended with three people dead. Fox Force Peyton Yeager is in Arlington tonight. She spoke with the mother of one of the victims, Peyton. Stephen, the Arlington Police Department tells me it received multiple tips in this investigation that connected Larry Reed to the triple murder. One of the tips helped U.S. Marshals pinpoint a home in Mississippi. Inside, Larry Reed was hiding out. Six weeks after convicted killer, 29-year-old Larry Reed was released from state prison. He's now accused of shooting and killing three people at an Arlington apartment complex. A manhunt was underway since the January 25th triple murder. Tuesday, U.S. Marshals found Reed at a home in Greenville, Mississippi. They got a breakthrough. They needed when they received a tip from a caller who pointed them in the right direction of Larry Reed. According to an arrest warrant affidavit Fox 4 obtained on Tuesday, a witness stated Larry Reed also went by the name Crip. Arlington police wanted to protect the identity of the person who revealed Reed's location. So the majority of the witness's information was redacted. A tipster also told police Reed shot the 31-year-old victim who lived at the apartment. Investigators believe Reed and the unidentified 31-year-old victim knew each other and high-risk drug activity may have been involved. Police say Reed continued to fire at others in the apartment. 29-year-old Monique Smith was also fatally shot. Smith's two children were not hurt. The third victim was 29-year-old Shannon Jones. His family says he's a mobile barber and he was just visiting the apartment. I just don't know where to go from here. Jones's mother says the news of the arrest was a slight sigh of relief. I was worried that if he did that, what else is he going to do? Is he going to come here for us? Reed has a violent criminal history. In 2014, Reed pleaded guilty to the June 2012 murder of an 18-year-old at an Arlington house party. Reed waived his right to a jury trial and was sentenced to 11 years in prison. He just finished his sentence in December. I just feel like they slapped him on the wrist and told him, okay, go to timeout, and when timeout is over with, you just come back here. That's, that's not working for me. The U.S. Marshals also tells me there was a short standoff today in Mississippi when they were taking Reed into custody. They tell me he was hiding out in the attic, so Marshals had to force their way inside the home and arrest him. He will now be transferred here to Tarrant County. 911 callers helped police find a van with a man in the back waving for help. The back doors had swung open and that man was on the phone with dispatchers letting them know where he was while the driver took police through Fort Worth, Arlington, eventually Dallas. Watch for Amelia Jones has the 911 calls. She is in Dallas tonight, Amelia. Hey, Steve, Fort Worth police say the 911 calls were crucial to tracking the van and ultimately arresting the suspect here in Dallas. I was the guy that just called, but I'm in a moving van that my friend stole, and I'm in the back, and he's driving crazy. Just after 7.30 Friday morning, this frantic 911 call led police on the chase for a white cargo van with a man trapped in the back. Fort Worth police say it started as a fight between two men in a, quote, dating relationship at a motel off East Lancaster Road. We're just happy. Riverside and Lancaster now. He's turning right on Riverside. The caller stayed on the phone with police and updated them as the suspect, 29-year-old Takeem Pettin, drove through Fort Worth, Arlington, Grand Prairie, and eventually Dallas, according to police. He's driving crazy on the highway. Once the van was on the highway, it caught the eyes of other drivers. So I'm heading south on the 35 Express Lane. There's a white van swerving in and out of traffic, and there's a guy in the back window banging on the window trying to get my attention. This caller dialed 911 again when the back doors of the van opened. The guy in the back just opened up the back door. I can't. I think he may be trying to get out of the van. The door is wide open while they're going down the highway now. More calls from witnesses poured in. Okay, yes, ma'am. Is this about the van?
Yes, thank you. In addition to the 911 calls, Fort Worth Police Department's real-time crime center was able to get a license plate and vehicle description. It was our cameras that we used, the, the flock readers, uh, but the cameras that were able to pan, tilt, and zoom. Uh, the cameras do face the freeway, but when we're able to utilize those tools to follow that vehicle and get a good license plate. Arlington Police, Grand Prairie Police, and Dallas Police were involved in the search. Just before 9 in the morning, the van stopped in Oak Cliff. Our Dallas officers got on scene at 8.51 a.m., and within two minutes, they took the suspect into custody without injury. Pettin is charged with aggravated kidnapping causing bodily injury. He also has an out-of-town warrant. Fort Worth police say the community's trust played a crucial role in the arrest. We always say also, you know, if you see something, say something. Today is a perfect example of that. Our community called out to us, they trusted us, and because of that, a case is solved. Police say while the suspect was driving all over the area, no one reported a crash involving the van. The victim was checked out by medical professionals and police say he's back in Fort Worth. Meanwhile, Pettin could face more charges as the investigation continues. Allen police say a woman taken into custody this week by SWAT officers during a standoff at a home terrorized her children. What started as an investigation into an assault involving her husband revealed horrific cases of abuse. Fox First Peyton Yeager is in Allen tonight with more on the story. Peyton. Stephen Allen police tell me they have responded to this Allen home 11 times in this new year. The children, they were removed from the home last month and immediately interviewed. The children told investigators that their mom often would state that she was going to kill all of them. Inside this Allen home off Tanglewood Drive, police say six children were being tormented by their mother, 36-year-old Lull Top. Top was taken into custody Monday morning after a two-hour standoff with Allen SWAT. Police were there to arrest her on six felony warrants for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon for what they say she did to her six children. <laughs> Alan Swat was called in after Top barricaded herself in the attic. Cell phone video from a neighbor shows Top with her hands behind her back. Court documents show four weeks earlier on January 8th, police and CPS launched a child abuse investigation when Top's husband called them to the home because she was beating him with a stick and that all of the children witnessed it. Top was arrested. The children were taken into CPS custody and Top later bonded out. The arrest warrant affidavit for the child assaults reveals the terror Top allegedly caused her children. They were interviewed after her arrest for assaulting her husband. They told investigators their mother often drank alcohol and if she ever ran out of alcohol, she would threaten them. A three-year-old disclosed Top had tried to put her inside the oven that was turned on. Police say one of the siblings, a 10-year-old, started physically fighting his mother to get the three-year-old away from the heated oven. The three-year-old and her four-year-old sibling were asked about scars on their body. Both children told investigators their mother used a knife to cut them. They said their mother would become angry and threaten to cut their hands and fingers off with a cleaver knife if they didn't help her find alcohol. One boy told detectives his mother once held the knife to his tongue. Plus, the boy said his mother made him drink alcohol, but he spit it out. Police said the children took it upon themselves to hide the knives away from their mother. Always weird stuff over there. The police were always there. Neighbor William Whitney says just a few days before the standoff, he had a strange encounter. Whitney says Top and another woman knocked on his door and asked to borrow Wi-Fi. Seeing the kids playing out here by themselves, no supervision, and to know that was actually happening down there is yeah. sad. Top is in the Collin County Jail this evening. Again, she's charged with six felony counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon for the violence against the children. Now, I spoke with multiple neighbors who witnessed that SWAT standoff on Monday. They tell me that specific family, they were renting that home in Allen, and they moved in about a year ago.
A Mississippi man is in custody for the hit and run that killed an Arlington police officer on his way to work last year. Darren McMichael was struck and killed after he bumped a car in front of him and he fell off his bike. Until today, there had been very few clues about a suspect. Fox Force Blake Hansen is outside Loose Dare Jail tonight with the suspects now in custody. Blake. As Stephen Heather, limited court records obtained by Fox 4 provide some sense of the work the detectives went through to try to track the suspect down. It's been a little over four months since Arlington police officer Darren McMichael was struck and killed in a hit and run crash along I-20 in Dallas while on his way to work. And now authorities say they've caught the person responsible. It was a never ending thing for the investigators. They weren't. This was never going to be a cold case for them. Wednesday, U.S. Marshals arrested Joshua Watson, a 26 year old from Jackson, Mississippi. Deputies say during the September 21st incident, McMichael, who was on his department issued motorcycle, bumped an SUV as traffic stopped and fell off onto the left shoulder. That's when a dark colored sedan ran over McMichael and kept going. McMichael's wife was following him in a separate vehicle and witnessed it all. Today there's a uh, uh, an arrest made due to the diligence and the tenacity of the detectives to, to, to bring it close to the end of this case. Court officials Thursday released part of the arrest warrant affidavit for Watson, which reveals detectives got a hold of cell tower data near the crash site. Among the numbers was one a Mississippi man provided to his parole officer, but he was unable to leave Mississippi as a condition of his parole. The limited court documents do not say how, but say that man provided information that helped deputies determine Watson was involved in the fatal crash. You always want closure, but when it involves a police officer or a firefighter, it's always, it's always a close-knit community with the family. It's not yet clear if there might be any other arrests in the case. Watson is being held on a $100,000 bond. An Arlington police officer shot and killed a man during a traffic stop on Interstate 20 this afternoon. Police say the driver was holding a gun and refused to comply with the officer's instructions. The shooting shut down parts of Interstate while police investigated. Fox Force David Centendry is at Arlington Police Headquarters tonight. David. Yeah, we do not know the name of that driver or the officer. Those names have not been released at this point in time. But earlier today, the department said that that driver during the traffic stop had a gun and refused to drop that gun. An Arlington police officer patrolling on a motorcycle shot and killed an armed driver during a traffic stop on westbound I-20 near Park Springs Boulevard Thursday afternoon, according to the department. It took hours for police to process the scene on the highway where the black Cadillac sedan the suspect was driving sat with a shattered passenger side window. The department says the officer pulled the Cadillac over because it was driving erratically across lanes of traffic. He did request that the driver turn off the vehicle and exit the vehicle. The department says the driver refused to turn off the Cadillac or get out. The officer continued to give those instructions to the driver when he observed the driver was holding a firearm. The department will not say if the driver pointed or even fired the gun at the officer, but he refused to drop the gun, according to the department. The officer gave the driver multiple commands to drop his weapon. That's when the situation turned deadly. Our officer fired his weapon several times, striking the driver. Police did not specifically say how many shots the officer fired. The driver, who was alone in the Cadillac, was taken to a hospital and pronounced dead. There will be multiple investigations running at the same time. Westbound lanes were closed immediately following the shooting while investigators collected evidence. Those lanes have since reopened. Arlington PD's internal affairs and homicide divisions will each be conducting their own separate investigations. That officer has been placed on administrative leave. That is a standard protocol anytime an officer uses their weapon. And I asked the department earlier today if that officer was wearing a body camera. They say that he was wearing a body camera and the department hopes to release that footage early next week.